Hi everybody, thank you for tuning in to another cup of tech. I'm not running coffee today, I'm just running with regular Pepsi because uh, it's, it's a bit hot. It's, it's the middle of summer here, so it's damn hot. Things are really hotting up in Vegas. The CES show started this week and there's so much news, I want to get straight into it right now. First off the ranks, I want to start talking about the amazing things that we saw. Samsung. Samsung came out with a whole lot of stuff. Almost every appliance in your house can almost be replaced with a Samsung one now. Now, first of all, the TVs. They released this, or revealed, this huge 85-inch TV. It's amazing. It's 4K. And it's got this sort of big frame around it. It looks kind of like it should be in an art gallery. It's like this picture hanging off from a frame. Looks really good. Obviously, I'm not seeing it in person. The quality looks amazing. It just looks like something... It's replaced the cabinet because it's on a stand, and it just looks sexy completely. They've also released um, a whole new smart inside the smart TVs. Obviously smart TVs were a big thing last year, but now they're actually improving it, making it more user friendly. Huh, who mentioned that last week in their predictions? So they've shown off all this cool stuff, some really amazing things like Toyo TV, I want to watch comedy, and all of a sudden it starts suggesting TV shows for you. Um, so that was really nice to see. Also things like um, shared 3D split viewing. So if I want to watch a TV show, and a friend of mine wants to watch a different TV show with our different glasses and different headphones. We can actually watch this different shows on the same TV. That's kind of cool. Um, so there was a lot of stuff there. Now, one of the things they mentioned was that their smarts is also going to be released in, a, in an expansion pack for the 2012 range of TVs. Now, I knew that they were doing that because when I saw the 2012 range last year, they mentioned that the smart component could actually be removed and replaced with other ones. So they kind of already, we already knew that was going to happen, which is exciting. Other things, internet connected TV, um, fridges, so your fridge is going to know what's in there, it's going to connect to your TV, it's going to connect to your phone, it's kind of freaky. Um, and they've also announced this lens, which is going to go with the Samsung range of cameras, where you, it's a single lens which can do 3D photo and video, as well as 2D. And I thought that was really impressive because normally 3D cameras have the two, um, two actual lenses to make it work. They've made it work with one lens, that's pretty impressive. So that's, that's Samsung from me. Looking over to Gadget Guy, if you don't know about Gadget Guy, there's a guy who runs, who well, does a lot of work for Gadget Guy, Lee Stark, and he was hammering things at a CES this week. Had a live blog going, and I spent a lot of time just watching the photos reel in straight from CES. Really cool. Now, he started showing off something that really caught my eye curved TVs. So, normally our TV is quite flat, um, and once upon a time they actually came outwards. These ones are curving inwards to give you that in depth experience, like it's really coming around you, and that was something I didn't expect. So that was really cool. The first one you showed off was from LG. There wasn't one from Samsung, but they didn't show it in, the, in, in a, but they didn't show it in their initial keynote. So the LG one looks really cool. It looks super thin and just sexy. It, we may not see it till 2014, but again, they had their 4K TVs. They're coming to Australia. They're going to cost over $10,000 easily, but they look amazing. That's LG. Over to Gizmodo, again, they pumped out so much stuff this week, and there's still more coming. Um, I saw something which they showed which I was kind of like, huh, Hisense, not a very hugely well-known brand for TVs, but they're out there. Transparent TVs. Right now, my TV is behind the camera and I can see it, and I can, I know there's a wall behind it, but I can't see it. So a transparent TV would allow me to see the wall. That's not really that great. But then I started thinking about shop fronts. A transparent TV on a shop front makes sense because you can still see into the store as well as watch maybe some product um, ads and things like that. Interesting. Or your window. So the window which normally has an amazing view, you could actually turn it on and start watching the TV instead of the view, maybe. Or maybe put a painting behind it and when you turn the TV off, you're left with a beautiful picture on the wall which still looks kind of cool with a frame around it. But I don't know, I'd, I don't know about transparent TVs. I want to know what you think. Would you want one? Can you see? You know, do you really want to see the dust behind your TV? That was my first thought. This one didn't get a lot of attention. It was something that's not so much amazing, but I thought it was extremely useful and something which is actually means something when it's revealed because CES is full of a lot of stuff which looks great and you may not actually even see it in the real world. This product I can see with a huge potential in the real world and it's available for you now. It's a spare one. It's a spare phone and it runs on a single AA battery and it can get like 15 years 
of not standby, but it can be stored for 15 years. That battery won't go flat. You keep it in the drawer because you know what? In case of a natural disaster, you need to leave the house real quick. Your phone is likely not going to make it that very long because people are going to be calling you and you'll need a spare. Having a spare phone could, could save your life. You could ring emergency numbers. People could call you. You could call out. It's a it's hundred bucks. It goes into your first aid kit, I would suggest. It's waterproof. It's dustproof. It's going to survive pretty well. It's going to help you survive as well. When I saw this, I thought, my gosh, this is just genius. It's got a built-in torch. One AA battery, 15 years. You can leave it in there and you get 10 hours of talk time, which is quite, quite good at one AA battery. So uh, spare one, worth checking out, works across the world, except for Japan. But yeah, every country, you can use it. There's two models, one for different sides of the world for some reason. Worth checking out. It seriously could save your life. Now also with C, as we start to get into things that are just ridiculous. One of them, a Bluetooth fork. Yes, a fork, Bluetooth, and what it does is it monitors how you eat and how fast you eat and kind of tries to help you slow down. So if it notices that you're lifting this up too often, it's like, dude, you're going to get indigestion, you're going to put weight on, you're not going to eat properly. Because, you know, there's the whole diet thing about if you eat your meal, eat half the meal and have a break, you might actually find that you're full. That's kind of a fact. And this is what it's trying to trying to do for you is trying to tell you buddy you've had enough to eat because you've eaten slow and you've sort of told your body that but it's kind of ridiculous because you know if you've got a wife or if you've got a, if you live with your parents they'll tell you when you're eating too fast as it is because you don't talk and you just keep eating that's kind of enough I don't need a nagging fork <laughs> something else I read that was just completely ridiculous this isn't CS related this one actually um, a man in China decided to organize for online villains to kill his son in World of Warcraft. So he was so tired of his kid playing World of Warcraft all the time that he went out and recruited people who play World of Warcraft, paid them money to spend all their time just killing him in the game in hopes that it would discourage him from playing and then maybe go outside and kick the ball. Insane. I've never heard something so ridiculous or so extreme, but um, it's kind of funny because you can just imagine this. <laughs> you can just imagine your son sitting there going, why? Like, why me? Like, why am I being picked on, you know? And then somehow his dad comes out and says, yeah, they're my posse. Like, I pay them to kill you. That's insane. Kogan. I love talking about Kogan, because sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Generally it's good. This one is. They've released a phone. Now they have released a tablet in the past, and it was okay, it wasn't very good. But they've come in with, in with a phone, which I think is actually going to appeal to a lot of people. It's got, it's got a semi-decent process, just a single, I think a single with dual core. Anyway, it's got, a process, it's got a decent processor in it from what I read. Half a gig of RAM, it's five inch, so it's kind of like, almost like a Galaxy Note 2, but a little bit smaller than that. And from the back, it looks just like the Galaxy Note. And uh, it's got a camera on the back, camera on the front, it's got a flash, uh, runs Android, ice cream sandwich. It's got some pretty cool things going for it. But the biggest thing it's got going for it is it's 150 bucks. 150 bucks, you can own this phone, which, you know what? If you're, if you're a younger kid and you're not making bazillions of dollars and can't afford, you know, like an iPhone or a Galaxy S3 or a Note 2, whatever it is, um, this could be a great option because it's a phone that your parents are going to be happy with you having because you're contactable, but you can still do Facebook, Angry Birds, Instagram, whatever whatever you want to do to still look cool amongst your friends. It's got a micro SD slot to still put a 32 gig card into it, put your music and videos on. It's five inches, so it's actually going to be a pretty cool media device. I was thinking for people above, say, 16 years old or whatever it is, they might already have an iPhone and they're thinking, well... I use this on the train and I watch movies on there, but the battery dies and that kind of sucks. Well, you get this for 150 bucks, load it with your movies, and if the battery dies on that, well, who cares? People can still reach on your other phone. So I think that's kind of two selling points for this um, this phone. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to see how good it is. It, obviously, it's a $150 phone, so it's not going to be, oh my God, it's so much better than the iPhone 5. I'm not expecting that. but. For 150 bucks, it looks bang for your buck, one of the best options out there right now, and 
you've got to check it out, you've got to give credit to Kogan when it's due, and I think uh, there it is, right there. So that's really the show. I didn't want to put everything in CES this week. There's so much. I mean, there was always like a six-inch phone. There was, you know, a thinner phone, a, th a thinner TV, a, a this and that. But those are the things that really stood out to me. Let me know what the big news was that stood out to you. I mean, I couldn't fit everything in the show, obviously, but let me know what you think. Um, what was the big highlights for you at CES? It might still be coming even. And uh, let me know what you think of this as well. This is new. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye.